<clears throat> okay. <laughs> You're on tape uh, 53. Okay. <clears throat> What's your real name? Christopher? Yeah, Christopher Ryan Harris. This is Christmas Day. Okay. Now keep this, uh, I just let me cut it with a pair of scissors. Okay. Keep this with your stuff, and a uh, hundred years from now, your great great greats can check you out. Go okay. down to librarians. Okay. Check you out, man. Alrighty. Uh-huh. And uh <clears throat> now I'm gonna get my log going here. <clears throat> Is it R Y A N? R Y A N. When were you born, Chris? April fifteenth, nineteen seventy-four. Yeah, uh, you've uh, okay, Chris. You know, you've told me your name, uh, Christopher Ryan Harris, right? And you told me your date of birth, uh, April the fifteenth, nineteen seventy-four. And where where were you born? Scioto Memorial Hospital, Portsmouth, Ohio. Portsmouth, Ohio. And um, where do you presently live? Huntington, West Virginia. What's your address up there? Seventeen forty-six Arlington Boulevard. In Huntington, West In Virginia. Huntington, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, actually, this is not Huntington. You're, in fact, at my house, and this is Christmas Day. Uh, you and my, my daughter are down here for Christmas Day and yeah. uh, having presents and all that sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. Now, what is your occupation? <clears throat> my occupation, I'm a photojournalist for the Herald-Dispatch out of Huntington. Okay. And um, how much education do you have? I have four years of college and several years of Marine Corps Institute and several other... You got your care. bachelor's degree? Yes. In what? In business management uh -huh. and some journalism. Okay, so. all right. And uh, now are you married, single, divorced, widowed, separated, I'm single. all the above? Single. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> single man? No, I'm, I'm in a relationship actually, a very serious one I would think. But Who's that with? That's with uh, Andrea Shabity. I know her. Yeah. Now, uh, do you have any children? I do. Ian Harris. How old is he? He is four years old. Okay. Uh, now, let's kind of go in the opposite direction. The, the library likes me to get a, a genealogical line here right. as far back as we can go. Okay. Now, what's your father's name? My father's name is Mark Calvin Harris. And where's he live? He lives at 4008 Rosemount Road. Okay. And what's your mother's name? My mother's name is Monica Jackson. Monica Ann Jackson. Her maiden name is Saunders. Monica Saunders. Is she from uh, She's Soda from County? She's from County as well. Okay. And your father from Soda County? Soda County. Okay. So they're divorced. They and are. And your divorced. mother lives where? Huntington, West Virginia. Okay. Now, um, let's see. Can you go back any further? What was your parents on your father's side? Okay. His parents. Okay. My, uh, my grandfather on my father's side was Paul Wilbur Harris. And my grandmother was Mary Lou Harris. Okay. What was Mary Lou's maiden name? Do you know? Mary Lou's maiden name was Sheridan. Was she from Southern County? She was from New Boston, yes. New Boston. And what did your grandfather do? He was the uh, head foreman at the old steel mill, the steel mill or whatever down in New Boston. Uh-huh. Okay. And uh, in fact, what does your father do now? My dad what? has owned uh, True Value Hardware 
and Toy Town, and now I believe it's Market Street Hardware. Or yeah. Toy Town. Right. Okay, a hardware or several years. Okay, yeah. That's down in Portsmouth. Down in Portsmouth. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, is your is your mother work? My mom uh, retired, I believe, from Cisco Foods as their sell East Coast sales representative, and whatnot. And, okay. Uh, yep. And that's about just. And about. now, uh, her parents' name. Her parents' name was Patricia Saunders and Pat Patrick Saunders. And uh, Patrick Everett Saunders, I believe. Okay. Was he from New Boston? They, no, they were all from uh, uh, Clay Township, outside okay. of County School. Okay. And what did he do? You know? He was <laughs> in the Navy for several years, and then he became a prison guard, and uh, which I believe he retired from Lucasville Penitentiary oh, okay. eventually. Yeah. Okay. Now, is it possible for you to go back even further to your great grandparents? On my mother's side. I believe the farthest back I could go would be maybe her mom's mom, which were Milers, I believe. Okay. And after that, I have no idea. How about on your father's side? My father's side would be uh, uh, Wilfred and Mamie Sheridan, which would be my my dad's mom's parents. Okay. Okay. And that's about as far as I could go there. Um, now, uh, do you have any brothers and sisters? I do have a brother. His name's Andrew Craig Harris, mm -hmm. and he was born in Portsmouth, Ohio as well. Where is he now? He's in Huntington. He's a chef at Rocco's. Oh, is he really? Yeah. Okay, great. Well, now, uh, you were uh, in the service, yes. and uh, you, did you enlist in the Marines? I, I, I went down to the Marine Corps recruiting station in 96, the end of, and joined there right around, uh, yeah, 96. Do you remember the date you went in? 96, 97. Remember the date you raised your hand? Uh, well, it was before my birthday. It was right around, uh, well, it might, might have been April 97 by the time I actually got processed in there. Why did you join the Marines? Uh, well, it, uh, I'd, I'd wanted to be a Marine for a long time, and I wanted to get my education out of the way, and then I, then I got that out of the way, and then I thought it was time to go down and you know, like like uh, a lot of my forefathers did, join the military. Um, do you remember the date you got out? Yeah, actually, uh, I got out uh, was that? June, uh, July, I believe, oh five. Okay. What was your rank when you were discharged? I was a sergeant in the Marine Corps, Staff Sergeant Select. Would that be uh, E5? E5, okay. selected for E6. And okay. Well, um, so uh, where did you go to your boot camp? I went to Marine Corps uh, Base, Paris Island, South Carolina. How long is that boot camp? I believe it's six weeks now. Six weeks for I boot believe, camp? Yes. In the Marines? Weeks. I think so. Six weeks, yeah. How long six was weeks. that for you? Uh, six weeks. Really. And then... Um, then what did you do? Then I went to uh, the Marine Corps School of Infantry and um, where is that located? Camp Lejeune, Camp Geiger, uh, North Carolina, Jacksonville, North Carolina. Okay. How long? Uh, how long is that uh, training? I believe that was uh, maybe maybe three weeks, three or four weeks. I believe maybe. I thought Marine Corps basic was thirteen weeks. Maybe it is 13 weeks. <laughs> you can't remember? I can't remember. I know it was hell. <laughs> <laughs> it was? <laughs> Did you do the crucible? Actually, I was the first. My, my platoon, my section, whatever, my company, was the first company to go through the crucible there. Really? Uh-huh. You were an experiment. We were an experiment. We had generals from every branch of the world watching us go through that thing. Really? Yeah. What was that like? It was pretty, it was pretty exciting. Was it uh -huh. intense? Oh yeah. Ann and I are going to go experience it again in January. Yeah, it's sort of truncated version, I'd oh, yeah. say. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd like to hear about that. Okay. <laughs> in fact, I'd like to watch that. But anyway, um, uh, so you were in basic training, and you describe it as hell. Why? Why would you describe it as that? Oh, well, I just yeah. It was, it was uh, tough. For me, yes, it was because I was a little bit older. And I and I understood 
a lot more than probably what a lot of the younger kids did. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, and it was <laughs> it was uh, it was actually rel relatively easier for me compared to I'm sure an 18 year old kid. Right. I mean, I was 20, I was 21, I believe when I went through. It was easier, 21. easier mentally. Do you think? Oh yeah, physically, yeah. physically and mentally, I believe it was both okay. easy for me. Okay. Um, well, then then you went to infantry. Oh, yeah. Training, oh, and yeah. that was about three weeks, uh, uh -huh. but you're not sure, I bet. I, well, it was, <laughs> Maybe a, it, was it was just such a combined, compressed. yeah, it was all compressed. Like, you went from Paris Island, basically you went straight into the school infantry if you were an infantryman, and then, then I went on to uh, counter and anti-terrorism and stuff like that. Counter anti-terrorism yeah. school? Well, it was, a, it was a combined school that shows you all different types of anti- and counter-terrorism tactics, and you get, you get basically picked for that. And I went on to do that after oh, after yes. school infantry. So why are you picked then? Based on scores, uh, based on performance. Yeah, I was on... I was a genius. Okay, basically. <laughs> well, and then uh, compared to a lot of the guys, that uh, were, they were just grunts, weren't they? That's all kinds. Now, uh, so you went in, you think, uh, in '97 officially. Right, officially. So uh, so you were in the Marines. Uh, when 9/11 happened, 2001. Oh, actually, actually, in, when 9/11 happened, I was the only Marine on the eastern coast, eastern province of Saudi Arabia, really monitoring uh, certain terrorist activities, taking a look at them and listening and that kind of uh -huh. stuff. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Well, uh, when you heard that, what what happened? What did you think? I thought I was screwed because I was in the Middle East. Uh -huh. <laughs> my country was getting attacked. I'm dead. <laughs> pretty much. And I was surrounded by five terrorist factions at the time. You were. So I thought we were pretty much done done with it. You were the only Marine there. I was the only Marine. I was Did, in charge. Were there other Americans there? I was in charge of a, of a detachment of army, cer certain special army guys, and uh, we, we, were, uh, we had a mission to uh, take care of business on certain ends of the uh -huh. United States government there. Uh, so uh, and you were, did did the uh, terrorist groups know you were there? Oh yeah, they knew we were there. I mean, we were Americans driving big white Caprice classics. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> and we lived in the in, in the American compound called the Oasis in Dharan there, right outside where Cobar Towers, of course, got hit. Wonderful. <laughs> did you? Uh, did you? I hope they get that in there. I'm sure they will. Uh, did you? Uh, did they come after you? Any? Did they try any stuff? Well, we had a lot of. Uh, we actually, actually, while I was there, I mean, my, my whole job was to make make the United States citizens that were there to know that we were being watched, that we had that that there were there was danger, imminent danger in our area at all times, and actually, we had a doctor who was over there for uh, for an oil company, no names mentioned, and he. Uh, he uh, he got uh, an IED, I guess you could uh, call it, that was on his. It was just a little like a piece of looked like a like a milk carton basically on his car, and he moved it, and it triggered the uh, explosion, blew his hand off. Which he's a doctor, so therefore it pretty much ended his career. Oh my! And uh, and you know, I mean, we got targeted a lot, but you know, it's, yeah, you don't hear about that kind of stuff anymore. You know, and there's bigger stuff going on. Well, now you you went to uh, infantry, and then you you transitioned into anti-terrorist counterattack. It's it's you still you still utilize your basic infantry. You know, I mean, it's just a special specialized deal for uh, for infantrymen to do. It's an option. After that uh, counterterrorism schooling training, mm -hmm. what did you do then? Where did you go? Well, then I went on to the the Marine Corps FAST teams. It's a fleet anti-terrorism, like a security team that. That deploys to it, it's a rapid deploying unit that's that's actually deployed. I would say 260 days out of a year. So you were uh, after to that. every bad place in the world. So you were sent somewhere. Every 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 time you heard of anything like take for instance Africa bombings, Kenya Tanzania, um, uh, Kosovo, um, Africa again. Um, you guys were there, uh, on Iraq, the, on the margins. They're all, at least. Yeah, they're 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 there. Okay. If you ever hear of a bad thing happening, those Marines are the ones that are there. How many Marines are we talking about usually? Roughly a very uh, sometimes uh, it's a it's basically three companies of Marines that that cover 
the whole world spectrum of terrorism. That'd be about 500 then. Roughly. Um, interesting. So uh, they they are highly trained people. Mm -hmm. And what? Well, I'm going to have to pause this. Okay. Okay, I got a phone call. <clears throat> so, all right, we were uh, interrupted by a phone call from my daughter in Germany. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. I've been there. Yeah. Nice place. She's been to about 35 different countries. Oh, wow. Traveled all over Eastern Europe and lived in Russia for about a year and a half. I forgot where we were. Um, we're talking about uh, you. You went in and fast. And fat, we were at the fast company stage of my career. Okay, yeah. Marine Corps. And that's uh, you're part of a unit, maybe about 500 uh, guys. A, well, the, there's a there's a first fast, a second fast, and a third fast. And each fast company's responsibilities are in different theaters of the world. You rotate out, so each fast company gets a taste of the Middle East. Uh, South, uh, Southeast Asia, which, okay, you got uh, Bahrain would be your station in the Middle East because it's co-located in all the bad spots basically in the Middle East. And then you have Europe, which is Italy, and I believe they switched that to Spain now. You're in Road to Spain now, but they're in Road to Spain now. And as far as your Korea, your threat in Korea, you're in um, Yakuska, Japan. Oh. So. Were you in all three of those yes. spots? I've been, been in every... all three of them. Okay. Uh -huh. Which did you like the best as far as uh, being in a country is concerned? I was. I always was fond of the Middle East, to tell you the truth. Really? Uh huh. Bahrain? Well I, well, I just like the Middle East. I like the culture because it's so different than all the all the rest. Okay. Interesting. Um, well, so you rotated all through three different regions, uh -huh. three fast groups. Yeah. Uh huh. And that's the idea. If you're in one, they want you to have experience in the other two, also. Right? Mm -hmm. um, well, what then? Um, how long? What, was, how long does that take? I was with them about two and a half years, and then I then I went out to uh, the light armor reconnaissance, which is they'll they'll take guys like me, and they'll they'll put us in a in a forward uh, reconnaissance. Light armor reconnaissance is a is a group of guys that go around in these eight-wheeled vehicles, yeah. uh, and uh, go forward of go forward of the lines, gather information. It's sort of like a soft jab in combat. Mm -hmm. They go forward, stir up a bunch of stuff, get information, intel, and come back, and you know, okay. and relay it to the leaders and stuff. It's pretty neat thing. You, you're talking about something interesting. Uh, I guess this is when you, we were in a fast group. Okay. Too. You're in. Uh, Africa and you're listening in on terrorists. That, that was Dalaran, uh, Saudi Dalaran. Arabia. Okay, uh -huh. and you're listening in. Did did you do that kind of stuff all over? All over the eastern province of Saudi Arabia and up into, I mean, we knew that something was stirring up pre-9-11. Did you? So, I mean, there was a lot of stuff going on. There was a lot of anti-American Semitism going on over there in that mm -hmm. region. And we knew something was going to happen. But we had no idea it was going to happen to our homeland. Yeah. We thought it was going to happen to us yeah. there, mm -hmm. and uh, unfortunately, it didn't. Yeah. Um, and a lot well, of times, that's why we're at places like that, so it will happen to us instead of you. Um, so you you listen in uh, electronically on that. Well, thing? just uh, just anything, any any way, <clears throat> any means, any way, which is a pretty good experience because you get to go out and just act like a normal civilian on vacation a lot of times and just uh... But all the while you're... you're you know, all the while, all yeah, you're paying sir. attention. Mm -hmm. Totally paying attention to everything that's going on. I mean, that's that's the way I believe everybody should be mm -hmm. without having a mission. You know, but. Did you do that kind of thing in the Southeast Asia also? You were in Japan. Well, whenever we were over there, we were actually... Uh, there wasn't a lot of things brewing at the time. Like, mm -hmm. like now you have a lot of... Uh, a lot of North Korea stuff, China stuff like that going on right now. So they're pretty heated up, I'm sure, over there. Yeah. And uh, even Japan's building up their their weapons now. So, so when you were there, it's kind of laid back in in, a, in Japan. Relatively. Yeah, the, Japan was known as kind of a laid back station for that time because <coughs> mm -hmm. the Middle East was where it was at. Did you like Japan? Uh, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. uh, but 
uh, for the next tour, for one of those tours, were you in Italy or Spain? I was in Italy. Italy. The, the next group, the, I, was, I believe I was one of the last platoons that were stationed in uh, Italy because we were there for the uh, bombing, uh, the bombing campaign of Kosovo. Oh, uh, okay. Relinquishing the KLA of their arms and everything like that. Was Did you participate in that? Thing. Yeah, oh yeah. Did I you go into Kosovo? We were a big part of the Kosovo campaign. Did you, did you go? To Actually, what we did first, our first mission was we uh, we took over the embassy in Macedonia, which had been overran. Mm. So we reclaimed that for the United States of America. Oh, it's a pretty okay. neat thing. And, uh, How do you disarm those people? Well, by force. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to show works? force first to <laughs> get there. That, that's the way you know, I mean, the, that culture. I mean, they're 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 war torn, and the only <clears> thing they know is to get beat up, uh -huh. and if you can beat them up, then they'll respect you, uh -huh. and that's the way the world is. And I hate, I hate that a lot of people don't realize that. And we had to do that there. Oh, we didn't, okay. and we got their weapons, and and it settled down there for a while, and I think it beefed back up about two years later. But I wasn't a part of it. What do you do with the weapons that you get? I must, there must be mountains of stuff. Cache. I mean, they 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 <coughs> cache it out, and then then they uh, then they sort through it, count them, label them, and who knows what happens to them? Throw them in the ocean, like they do a lot of the other stuff. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they give them to someone else. To Probably. Yeah. Sell them. Okay. Well, that, that's interesting. Um, now, while you were with the fast group or the groups that you're talking about, uh -huh. um, what was the most interesting thing? It, it all sounds interesting. Oh uh, well, I mean, just the, the the amount of training that we got. I mean, it was a, it was amazing. I mean, just the stuff that were that was at our fingertips. Just being a being an infantry guy at heart and having all this excess training to do with your trade, I mean, it was uh, it was it was incredible. I mean, you know, shooting off the backs of of Mark Naval Navy Mark V boats that you know go, you know, I don't know how many knots, like 50 knots, 60 mm -hmm. knots, you know, and you're shooting off the back of them in zodiacs and uh -huh. doing a lot of help, helo operations and uh -huh. just uh. Did constantly. you go? Did, were you a paratrooper? Constantly training. I went through airborne school. Did you? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, the Army Which airborne you don't school. Use, you don't use it in Marine Corps. Well, I mean, never it's, use it. It's, it's, it's just an additional it's just a beef fun you thing you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was that uh, when you went through airborne? Uh, was that the Army's airborne? Or yeah. Something? Oh yeah. That's okay. the all 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 uh, all airborne, whether it be Marine, anything. Their initial school is Army airborne. Yeah. yeah. Um, then. Uh, then where are you? I mean, well, was your last station Bahrain? No, no, actually, my last station in the Marine Corps was I, I became an instructor for Fast Marines. Oh. And and then I I uh, where is that? that? Where's that school? That's out of uh, Chesapeake, Virginia. It's a small little compound nobody knows about. Really? Hmm. Now. Now they. <laughs> there we go. And this is going all over the world. That's fine. Okay, so you're an instructor then? Oh yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Interesting. Well, um, let's get back to into the the Middle East. Uh, uh, were you in the Middle East before you went to Southeast Asia, and before you went to Europe, or how? I'm, I'm, every every chance I got to go to the Middle East, I went, and I, I ended up, uh, I was in Bahrain, I believe once or twice, and then I went back, when I went out to the Light Armor Recon out in, uh, out in California, 1st Marine Division, I then, um, the commanding officer was wanting to send a Marine from the 1st Marine Division to go to Saudi Arabia as the Eastern, for the Eastern Prominent Staff non-commissioned officer in charge over there. So they sent me as a sergeant because of my experience in the Middle East. So mm -hmm. I, I went, I got When did you get there? What? To go. What? And uh, I got there uh, so before pre-9-11, pre but I was there during 9-11. So That's yeah. when you said that. Uh-huh. Right. Wow. Um, and you were the only Marine there and uh, yep. thought you were toast. Oh yeah, well, I, I looked around me and all I had was a bunch of army guys, so I knew I was toast. You don't trust the army? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> they were great. Uh, what kind of army guys were they? Were they well, there's a special bunch officer? of different bunch of different guys there. Yeah. Um, how long were you there then? After night? I was there about I was there a total <clears throat> probably about uh, ten months. Okay. Total, and after 9/11, of course, I mean. What they do? I was actually supposed to leave the month uh, September mm -hmm. to come really? home. Was my 
mm -hmm. deployment was up and and uh, I couldn't believe what happened. I just totally forgot that I was even supposed to come home after the situation arising. I knew the mission was gonna take a turn. Yeah, yeah. You know? and well, what did you do then? Well, I knew back home we were probably uh, my unit, my platoon, my Marines were probably uh, getting ready to go to war. Mm -hmm. And I was excited to get back home so I could start getting back with my platoon and mm -hmm. preparing myself for war. How long did you stay over there after 9-11? Uh, I, I believe once, once, the, uh, once the airports opened up in London, once we got to fly out of the Middle East because we were locked down in the Middle East, no flights in or out, or were allowed out of the Middle East because of that. So we were there about a month and a half until they finally flew us out of, I think, Prince Sultan Air Base. Hmm. Out of, just outside of Riyadh. Well, while you were while you were over there, how how did the people? How did the uh, oh they 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 they're, they're uh, in Saudi Arabia? Yeah, how they treat you? A lot worse than I was treated by the sub Iraqi civilians in Iraq. Really? Oh, yeah. They don't like us. They don't like us. Yeah. No. So at least don't like us. Well, hmm. So you were you were better off with the Iraqi <laughs> civilians. Then. Oh yeah. How about Bahrain? How about places that Bahrain, are... I mean, it's the same thing. Well, the, the way the Middle Eastern people look at Bahrain is they think that Allah has... There's a, there's, a, there's a shield around Bahrain. So, therefore, they can go to Bahrain and do whatever they want. <laughs> so, it's... Uh, it's, it's a wild little, time. It's a them. wild time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you, uh, you did come back. Then, I did from, come back. Uh, from I after 9-11. And then what? Did you join up with your group? I got back with the platoons. I got back with the... The LAR guys, and we started. Uh, LAR is light, light armor, armor reconnaissance, reconnaissance. Uh -huh. and we started uh, pre-operations for war. Where did you Where did you <laughs> operate in uh, California? Actually, ready? we trained in uh, 29 Palms, California, mm -hmm. Marine Air Ground Task Force mm -hmm. Training Center. Okay. MAGTAF TC. Then where did you go? Well, then, uh, then we went. Then we went to Iraq, I believe, and then uh, then I went. Were you in the first invasion of Iraq? We were. Yes. Okay. What yeah. the, did you you guys went up the right flank? Didn't you? We were uh, tip of the spear for that. Okay. And uh, and actually the it was a I mean I don't know. Did you get up to the Diallo River and all that sort of place and you know, uh, about, I think that near uh, I'm just watching the History Channel mm -hmm. and stuff you know and um, what what was the name of your unit? Third Light Armor Reconnaissance. Third. Yeah, okay. I believe. Uh, if you were watching uh, Fox, I believe it was, then they were with Delta Company. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, did we, you get into Baghdad then? Yes, we did. Um, and uh, let's see. There was on the on the way. There was a uh, what was the name of the town on the way? There was a fight. Um, there's Tikrit. There's uh, Tikrit. I'm thinking about not that Karbala. one. Or, yeah, that one. Say that again. Uh -huh. Karbala. Karbala. Uh -huh. Yeah. Were you in a Karbala fight? We were near there. Okay. I, mean, I, I don't. I don't like to talk about a lot. Okay. Of that. Uh, I understand. Just say whatever you want to say. Then you get into Baghdad. Uh, how about the statue coming down? I wasn't there for that. Man. Okay. But I, I heard a lot about it, and I heard it was a great thing. <laughs> it looked like a great thing on yeah. TV. Uh, so the Iraqis treat you okay then at the first? I mean, of course. I mean, they treated they treated me all right every time I went back. I mean, they, there's nothing wrong with the, the Iraqi civilians. I mean, as long as, I mean, we were doing our job and protecting them and letting them eat and yeah. getting them water and doing our mission, you know, of course then, you know, you, you get politics involved into a military operation oh, yeah. as heavily as they did get involved. I mean, it's unfortunate <clears throat> that that happened because I know a lot of people that lost their lives over that. And, mm -hmm. And I know that they didn't lose their lives for no reason. So, well, uh, so you were in an invasion and then uh, came back. Mm -hmm. What did you do when you came back? Uh, um, oh, I went to uh, Chesapeake, Virginia, and uh, became an instructor for the Fast Marines. I okay. got what I wanted, basically. Did you? Yeah, I was. I was going to be a recruiter. I, I'd gotten flagged to be a recruiter, which I totally didn't want to do because of my experience and everything. I thought it'd be a waste. So I. Uh, I was talking to a communication sergeant. Ironically, he had a really bad speech impediment, and he had told <laughs> he had told me that if I picked up that speech impediment, there was no way I could get flagged for recruiting. So uh, I talked to my career planner, 
career, career destroyer or whatever you want to call them. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, we, we talked out the speech impediment thing and uh, everything worked out and I went to uh, train fast marines. What did you, you do, have a lisp? A little bit. Something like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. So yeah, we don't want recruiters. <laughs> They you spit when they're yeah, talking. You don't want that guy coming and talking to your kids. <laughs> All right, then. So you did the instructing thing for how long? Uh, oh, that was the greatest. That was probably the greatest was time in the Marine Corps. Yeah. Good one? Oh, yeah. And uh, I did that for, I was with the mobile training team, and I did it for about two, two and a half years, I think. Mm -hmm. and, uh, met some great guys, and then, uh, you know, we all started, we did a lot of, uh, mobile training all over the world, in and out of Iraq, in and out of every place. How many times have you been to Iraq? Oh, twice, I'll say. Meaning more? As a Marine. As a Marine. Uh -huh. Have you been over there as a not a Marine? Well, uh, I, w I was uh, with a private security contracting company as well. Oh, were you? Yeah, but that's... Uh, Who were you that's, with? That's... Uh, I'm not allowed to say? No, You're not allowed to say. I'm not going to say. <laughs> Black Hawk, Black Watch? Oh, no, yeah, they, I think they're all done, aren't they? I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, okay. But, uh, well, uh, then, uh, so you're over there twice at least officially, and uh, what's there? What'd you go back for the second time for? Actually, With I went training. back to yeah. I went back to uh, there's there's some Marines over there that needed some on the job training, and I and uh, and I wasn't I wasn't very happy, you know, being home. And every now and then you get an itch that you need to you need to be somewhere else, and you need to you need to help help other people. And uh, mm -hmm. and I thought that it was time that I go back. Then uh, you're getting pretty close to getting out of the service. Oh yeah, yet, I was. Right? I had. To, I think I. I think I may have even did a little bit of extension time there for that. And, uh, okay. It was worth every bit of it. It was. Oh yeah. It's just the fact that you know. I mean, you get you get tired and and it's just uh, you know whenever uh, you got some good friends that aren't you know around anymore and stuff mm -hmm. and you're losing your friends and it's just kind of hard to. Hard to handle. So I got well, um, what medals do you have? I have a have a, you know they they gave me a lot of medals. And gave I, you a bunch of them, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I never got a Navy Achievement Medal. But you should record. have one. Should have one. Darn right. Master Guns Penaloza. You ever <laughs> see that? <laughs> what did he knock you out of? No, he, he he had me one, but he never he forgot to give it to me. So I never got is it. Is it on your DD-214? I don't know where he is. Yeah. Is it on your DD-214? No, it's not. So I can't wear it. I won't do that. All right. Uh, did you get a Purple Heart? No, I didn't. Uh, well, that's a good thing. And do you have any, um, let's see, you, you got out um, and did you like the Marines? Sounds like you oh, did. Oh, I love the Marines. I mean, I, I would go back. Well, why don't you? Uh, don't want to. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it's a great thing, but you know it's it's a it's it's a good youthful. Event. How long were you in the Marines? I was in about eight and a half years, I'll say. You know. Okay. Time served. Do you and your your friends? Do you stay in touch with oh, friends? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. How do you do that? The biggest and... bond. That's the biggest bond I believe that I've I've, I've ever I've ever encountered. Um, These are fellows you had with you in combat, and so forth. Oh yeah. There's a yeah. strong. Oh yeah. It's a strong fraternity. It, it goes beyond any any friendship, basically, you could ever have with anybody. Do you have reunions, or do you have you gotten together uh, personally? Oh yeah, well, we we try to get together. It's hard to do, and uh, and you know a lot of a lot of us are a lot of us are still contracting, and a lot of us you know are either dead or contracting. Contracting <laughs> meaning that meaning uh, private, they're out of the service, sector. but they're with. Private sector. The private sector, yeah. yeah and the private the, militia. Yeah, and you just, you just, you. Is that Dick Cheney's militia? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I know they do good things. I mean, there's, okay. there, there's, there's some bad, there's some bad guys over there, but you know, you'll have that. There's some bad guys over here. You know. Um, is there anything else you want to, want to? Do, do, have you ever, have you seen any famous generals? Did you ever see Petraeus? Did you ever see? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm at General Krulak. Uh, General Peter Pace. Uh, uh -huh. I got a. I, I really got. A, I got a warrior medal from uh, Paul Bremer. Oh really? And I got a. I got, a warrior, pictures medal, of that? I got a warrior medal from Christopher Hill, the uh, uh -huh. Macedonian ambassador there. And Did you have? Do you have pictures of that? I believe I probably have something somewhere, unless okay. my. Uh, 
unless it got caught in the fire. You had a fire. Oh yeah. Well, I didn't, but uh, somebody that didn't like me had a fire. But that's that's another story. Okay. Anyway, that's not a veteran story. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, what what have you done with your uniform? My uniform's hanging in my closet. Okay. Both of them. And Both of them meaning. Well, my 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 gabardine, my greens, and my, oh, yeah. my dress my dress. Blues, yeah. Okay. Uh, Chris, is there anything else you'd like to say? Uh, anything else you'd like to add? Well, I believe if there's you know there's there's kids out there wanting to you know do something good for themselves and something they won't ever regret. I believe they should join the service. To tell you the truth. Sounds like you had quite an adventure I mean, and it was worth yeah, every minute. I personally think every young man, especially nowadays, yeah, if they want their kids to speak English. They should join <laughs> the Marine Corps or the Armed Forces of some sort. Have the um, have you used any of your educational benefits? I think you would get some. Actually, you know what? I haven't, and uh, I could, wished I, I wished I could give them to my brother or, or even Annie. You know, oh, I wish yeah. I could just sign them over to to somebody that, that could could get a lot more use out of them than me because I have a career right now that yeah. I love and enjoy and pays the bills. Oh yeah, you know, and you plan on staying with that then? Oh yeah, I, I, I don't see why I would if I if, you know I mean I just. Uh, Pretty good thing. And it's like okay, sounds like you're stress kind of, reliever. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, being up in Huntington, you're kind of close to the community too. And yeah. And involved in the thick of things. So, yeah. Huntington's a good little spot. Mm -hmm. We've got a good university there. Well, uh, Chris, I always shake hands right, with every John. veteran. I, my pleasure. My pleasure Great too. Thing. It really was. Um, I've got over 200 now. I'd say, and, and like I say, you're on tape number 53. Cool. So. <laughs> All right. All right.